الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا من رب العالمين I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise Him Azza wa Jal for His blessings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us His pleasure in this worthy life and hereafter. Allahumma ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. We'll continue with the life of the greatest of the people who walked on the face of the earth up to the prophets and messengers. And they are the Sahaba to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the last Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala, we spoke about was Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, Ja'far al-Tayyar, the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted as a martyr and gave him wings in Jannah, in paradise, because he left his wings in the battlefield, in the battle of Mu'tan, radiallahu ta'ala an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a great reward to the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and a great, great honor for their stances and their virtue that they had accompanying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah azza says about the Sahaba, min al-mu'minina rijalun sadaqu ma'ahadu Allah alayhi fa minhum man qadha nahbah. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرْ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا Among the believers, there are some men that they were truthful to whatever they promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They gave the covenant to Allah. Among them are some who they, they fulfilled their promise. And they passed away from this way of life. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرْ And among them, there are others that they are waiting. وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا And they never changed any single thing. These are the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Abdullah ibn al-Mas'ud said his beautiful words describing really the situation of the Sahaba and how should we be. He said, Man kana minkum biman Whoever among you wants to follow somebody and to take somebody as a role model, let him take the one who has passed away. Why? What's the reason for it? Because the, those who are alive, you cannot trust that they are not, not going to be falling into fitna and trial. And that we see nowadays. So the, he, he means the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because they passed away and they were upon the Tawheed and upon the following of the Prophet. I and mean, he says, ashabu Muhammad so Abdullah ibn Masood is a Sahabi himself, said, but he was young. Said so they, they were the companions of the Prophet. Kanu Allah, by Allah, they were the best of this ummah, best of ummah of, of Islam. Abarrahan quluban, the most pious in their hearts. Wa'amakaha ilman, the most, the deepest in their knowledge. Wa'akallaha takallufan, and the least of the people that they would show or do something just to go out of their way to show to the people. That were the least Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala. There were a people that Allah chose them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be companions of his prophets and to establish his religion. So know their honor, their dignity, know their value, know their virtue. And follow them in their footsteps. وَتَمَسَّكُوا بِمَا اسْتَطَعْتُ مِنْ أَخْلَاقِهِمْ وَدِينِهِمْ And hold on anything that you can from their moral and character and from their deen. فَإِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا عَلَى الْهُدَى الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Because indeed, they were upon the right path, guided ones. رضي الله تعالى That's the best description given for the Sahab رضي الله And why we should follow their footsteps. And whoever... Hates the Sahaba, and whoever talks bad about them, 
is among those when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran who may shaqiq the Rasul min ba'di ma tabayyana lahu al-huda wa yattabi' ghayra sabil al-mu'minin nu'allihi ma tawalla wa nuslihi jahannam wa sa'ad musira whoever opposes the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the clear the path the guidance has been made open and clear for him and he follows not the way of the believers and the best of the believers is who the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala ghayra sabil mu'min what is meant nuwalihi ma tawalla will leave him in his path whatever he is he has chosen wa nuslihi jahannam i will make him enter in the hellfire wa sa'at masira and what a evil abode and evil place is that place and tonight inshallah ta'ala we're going to talk another about another great giant sahabi radiyallahu ta'ala do you know who he is hudaybah ibn yaman radiyallahu ta'ala as-sahabi al-kiram Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman al-Absi is the, the companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sahib usirri rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa the keeper of the secrets of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adu'u nifaqi wal munafiqin the enemy of the hypocrisy and the hypocrites themselves Abu Abdullah from the great honorable sahaba sallallahu ta'ala he became a Muslim and his father together. Al Yaman. His name is Hassan or Hussein. Was called Al Yaman after the, uh, took the name. And uh, his father, he became a Shaheed, a martyr in the Battle of Uhud. In the Battle of Uhud. We're going to talk about his virtues and then about his stances. Among his virtues, and that he, number one, is the keeper of the secrets of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Qama, who was the student of Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala, from a great fuqaha of uh, Al-Kufa in Iraq. The student of Ibn Mas'ud, he was not a Sahabi, but he was born in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. called al Ramin. He didn't see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but he was born in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Al-Qamah goes from Kufa, from Iraq, to where? To Sham, Syria, Damascus. And he prays in the Masjid of Damascus, prays to Raqqa. And he made dua, Allahumma rzuqni jalisan, and he jalisan salihan, faqa'ada ila biddarda. He said, oh Allah, make me, grant me to sit next to a, a, a right, righteous man. And Allah Azza wa Jal made him sit next to who? Abu Darda, Sahabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فقال له Abu Darda asked him, من من أنت? Where are you from? He said, من أهل كوفة. كوفة. I am from the people of Kufa. He said, أليس? Abu Darda is asking him, أليس فيكم صاحب السر الذي كان لا يعلمه غيره? يعني يعني هذي فاز. Here is the point of the hadith. He said, is not among you the one who used to know the sir? The secret of the Prophet وسلم, and nobody would know other than him. That means Hudayfan. أليس فيكم الذي جاره الله على لسان رسول الله صلى من الشيطان يعني أمارة. Is not among you or from the people of Kufa the one that that, that Allah سبحانه وتعالى He protected him from the Shaytan means Ammar bin Yasir رضي الله عنه. أو ليس فيكم صاحب السواك والوساد is not among you. The one who has the siwak, miswak, and the pillow, he means who? Abdullah bin Masood. There's a story about it. And what he mentioned, sir, that the secrets, what is the secret that he used to know from the Prophet? The names of the munafiqeen, hypocrites. Not other secret, but obviously it means the names of the hypocrites and, and, the, and uh, what they are doing. Was said to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Tell us about the Sahaba of the Prophet said, whom you want to talk? Shall I tell you? Do you, do you need me to talk about somebody specifically? Said, they said, today, like something special, specialty of him is that he is the most knowledgeable of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala regarding the munafiqeen hypocrites. Omar radiallahu ta'ala, one day he tells him, Ya Hudayfa, who is the one who is asking? Umar bin Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, is asking who? Hudayfa, radiallahu, ya Hudayfa. 
أَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ Am I from the hypocrites? رضي الله عن عمر عن وقيفة رضي الله He's asking if he's a hypocrite and we know who is Umar that Allah Azza wa Jal Basharahu bil Jannah. Prophet Zahra Zahra gave that he is going to be from the people of Jannah. أَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ قَالَ حُذَيْفَ لَا وَلَا أُزَكِّ أَحَدًا بَعْدَكَ And this words is after he kept talking and begging and begging, not just he said it right away. He said, no, 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 خلاص to the end. Just to get rid of the asking of Umar, he said, no, you are not. That's it. I'm not going to tell nobody else like to to purify them that you are not from munafiqeen رضي الله تعالى وكان أمر الخطاب and he was أمر الخطاب after the death of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم if anybody would pass away would see check if is Hudayfa there or no praying the janaza is Hudayfa is praying janaza and he asked the people look he could look for himself with other asked people do you see Hudayfa so if they say yes, then he prays the janazah. If they say no, or is doubtful, is he not? Then he doesn't pray the janazah. Why? Because he is fearful that there is the one who uh, the janazah is prayed to uh, for is the monarchy. Now that is in the time of, of Hudayfa, the time of Umar al Khattab. Okay, so because he knew that they were in the But what about in our time? It's not allowed for us. It's not allowed. You can't be doubtful of your Muslim brothers. Haram. You can't be doubtful of Muslim brothers because, oh, I don't, I don't pray because maybe he's Munafiq. No. How, how do you know that? You don't know. Are you in the time of the Prophet Did Hudayf ibn Aman is telling you the, the, who is that? Whatever. Whatever he shows, Alhamdulillah, we know he's a Muslim. He uh, claims to be a Muslim. He's, he's, even if we don't know him, he's, alhamdulillah, he's a Muslim. That is what is it is between him and Allah. We don't open his heart. He is a Muslim or not. We, we know that he is a Muslim. Maybe he comes from the masjid. You know, you know alhamdulillah, he, uh, the, the family says he's a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. We don't, we don't know. We're not allowed to be doubtful. And there, otherwise, we're going to open a fitna. We're not going to trust one another. Who is going to pray to who? Nobody is going to pray. Is this munafiq or not? Said, well, how would I know? Unless there is a delete and a proof. How are you going to have the delete and proof? You know, because the munafiq, what, what does he do? He shows to you Islam and he hides the, the kufr, the disbelief in his heart. So it's not allowed for us. This is in the time of Sahaba and even even, even though the Sahabas, there were only Hudayfa would know this and Omar Khattab because he knows that Hudayfa knows which of an other one than that it's not allowed for us to not pray it's out of janazah on a Muslim because oh I have doubt he's a munafiq. No, this is not allowed to open the other question. If I personally approve it or if you personally what? Personally. A person like uh, he pretend Muslim. Mm -hmm. But for the long discussion, I find him, I ask him. Do you believe in Quran? He said, no. That's, I don't mention the name. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Man. So this I, this, I, is, I, this I, is different. Okay, if you, if you have a proof for that, that it tells you he doesn't believe in Quran, doesn't believe in Sunnah, doesn't, that even if he says the Muslim, this is a different issue. And you may not, personally, you may not pray to him because he, he doesn't believe in Quran. Quran that's a that's part of becoming Muslim. But in general, to uh, that, that you cannot have doubt in the Muslims because, oh, I heard something about him, maybe he's not. No. And that we take, take the, the whatever, the, um, he says, I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah, he pray, salah, here, you know, you, you, nah, nashhadu lahu bil Islam. We, we, we witness that he is a Muslim. But if somebody, you've seen it, he doesn't, he says, doesn't believe in Islam, even he's, oh, I'm Muslim by name, and says you doesn't believe in Islam, that's a different issue when he dies. It's personal, and e even this is personal for you. You cannot impose on others. I don't impose, but I have uh, I have evidence from people. They know. The but that's that's they between bring, you and Allah. Is what is. I bring here. We pray. I yes, this is this is you, you different. Know, but the people know when you uh, just. Uh, Okay, I will talk to. Uh, so, but as a, I want to to say that in general, 
we're not allowed to uh, impose or in order to, to pass a hukum, a judgment, this person is munafiq or is, this, is, 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 is not. Uh, we believe that he's, he says he's a Muslim, alhamdulillah. That is between him and Allah, Azza wa Jal, the heart. We see his, his deeds, he comes to the masjid or not. If somebody doesn't know that, that's we have the proof in general. If he shows that he's a Muslim, we consider the Muslim. That is between us, uh, him and Allah, whatever he has. We are not uh, to pass judgment in, in general. That is in general, inshallah. Uh, so from the, actually, uh, Hudayf ibn Rahman was asked, a man asked him, man nifa? what is nifa? He said, an bil -islam wa la bihi. to speak about Islam and to speak like you're Muslim, you don't work according to Islam. You don't do what Islam tells you to do. That's the fact, because you're, you're telling others that you are Muslim, you're telling others that what Islam tells to do, but actually you don't do it in your daily life. Among the virtues of Hudayf radiallahu ta'ala, that the Prophet sallallahu made dua for him and his mother. Made dua for him and his mother. Hudayf al-Ramayan, he says, ummi. My mother asked me, she was a Muslim, Mundu meta ahduka bin Nabi, yani, from where, what, what is the, the beginning that since you, uh, since the, uh, what time you were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are you staying with him? So I mentioned to her, from this time. And the mother was blaming her, uh, blaming him. Why you are from this time? Why didn't you go before? And if, why you didn't uh, go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Years before that. And I told her, please leave me alone until I come to the Prophet Sallallahu He will pray Salat al-Maghrib and I will ask him to make dua for me so, so Allah can forgive myself. For me and you. Said, I came to the Prophet Sallallahu and prayed with him the Maghrib. He prayed long Salat al-Maghrib after the Maghrib until almost Salat al-Aisha. Then he, he left and I followed him. But somebody came to him and talked to him. And he left. Then he went. Then I followed him. He heard my, my sound, so that I followed him, said, Who is this? Obviously, it was the night. I said, what, what, what do you need? And I told him. Said. Then he made dua for him and his mother. He said, May Allah forgive you and your mother. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dua, what happens? That dua is accepted. That dua is accepted. So that is a, a manqaba, that's a virtue of Udayf radiallahu ta'ala and his mother. Among his uh, virtues is that he was very close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and staying with him a long time. Udayf radiallahu he was very, very close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that tell. That uh, we have evidence from that from the hadith of the Prophet. He says, I prayed with the Prophet and he used to say in his ruku, Subhan Rabbi al -Azim. In his sujood, Subhan Rabbi al -Ala. And there is no ayah of Rahmah that Allah is talking about mercy, except that he will stop and will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy. And then, or any ayah that Allah is talking about the punishment, except that he will stop and will ask Allah Azza wa Jal to, uh, to he'll seek refuge from the punishment. Which salah is this? The salah? Never. Salah to never. So that tells us, uh, ibn Aman, he is very close to the Prophet because he's praying, he's close to him even when he prays his nawafil for Qiyamul Layl. Because in Salat al uh, you're not allowed to, to speak and talk in, uh, any, anything other than what it is included in Salah. But in Salat al-Nafila, if you're praying even Tarawih or something, uh, you can ask anything, especially if you know the meanings. The, any ayah, that, that's the Sunnah of the Prophet, so any ayah that Allah mentioned paradise, for example, you can ask Allah to paradise. Any ayah Allah mentioned Jahannam, you can ask Allah to seek refuge. Uh, you seek refuge with him from, from uh, Jahannam and all, all, of, all of these. The other hadith, Hudayf, he says, I seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I seen that he came to a place of trash that people they used to use for trash and, and to, to garbage. And he uh, urinated while he was standing up. Okay. 
then he asked for some water, then I gave him water and he made made uh, wudu and he wiped over his uh, socks, leather socks that he used to wear. So here, it's, uh, it's uh, most likely as the Prophet he came in that place. It's allowed, it's allowed sometimes to urinate while standing, especially in this case, obviously the scholars say that that place was a place of trash, people who used to have trash, and uh, Prophet was saved from uh, not uh, getting the urine back. That's uh, pro from not, not becoming a uh, Najisian you know, with uh, urine in there. That's one of the things. And the Prophet maybe he was busy in that time and why. So it's allowed sometimes, it doesn't mean, but usually the Prophet, soon of the Prophet and as for us is to urinate while you, you are, stand, uh, you are uh, sitting down because it is safer for the, to not become Najasa and, and it is better, even uh, even, yeah, even healthier too, and health wise too. So that is most most of the times the problem, but sometimes this tells you to not make it say self haram, especially if, if this is the case as the problem mentioned, but not like in our toilets now nowadays, and even you're gonna mess up the whole the whole thing. This is in just only some things. So here. What does it tell you? The Hudayfa was very close to the Prophet. I mean, this he brought, and the Prophet uh, Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala was even covering the Prophet sallallahu because of that place maybe it may not be seen from others and protecting the Prophet sallallahu and using to bring the, the water uh, for him to make wudu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Hudayfa, he says one day uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa took the bone or the muscle of my, my leg and he and he uh, he put his grip on it, sallallahu and he said, "Hada mawdi'ul izar, fein abayta fa asfad, fein abayta fa la haqqa lil izari fi madun al kabe." This is a place where uh, uh, the the believer should have up to should have his toe, which is the middle of the shin. Okay, said, and if you you can't do it till there, then you should not put it below the ankles because there is no haqq for the izar, there is no right for the izar, which is a tobe and whatever you, you wear, and then to be under or below the ankles, as we mentioned a couple of days ago regarding that. That's why he's telling him that that's a sunnah of the izar or the tobe and that the believer can hear. So that does, Hudayfa tells us that he was very close to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another hadith, Hudayfa Yaqul, he says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أوى إلى فراشه وضع يده اليمنى تحت خده وقال ربي قني عذابك يوم تبعت عبادة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, whenever he used to sleep, he used to put his right hand under his cheek and used to say, ربي قني عذابك يوم تبعت عبادة. One of the du'as of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, Oh my Lord, protect me, save me from the عذاب on the day of resurrection. That tells you that Hudayfa he was there even when the Prophet used to sleep. Doesn't mean he used to sleep. It was in his home. Maybe the Prophet used to sleep when he was traveling or some or somewhere else, and Hudayfa was there, so he was very close to the Prophet. Another hadith, Hudayfa he says, "Kunna ida hadarna ma Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam taam lam na baayda aydina hatta yabda Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fiyadayda." We use any time we were with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were about to eat food, we would not put our hands. At the food before the Prophet so would we'll start and we'll put this in. And I am with him, Sallallahu says, and a little uh, girl comes, is like somebody is pushing her to eat the food. And she came and she puts his hand in the food. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi takes his ha her hand from the food. Then an Arabi, Bedouin, comes. And it is like almost is like somebody is pushing him. He's in a hurry to eat from the food, and he put his hand in the food. Prophet Zazam took his hand, and he said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Indeed, the shaytan makes halal permissible for him the, the the food when the name of Allah is mentioned. A shaitan jaa, and he mentioned the shaitan came. That's why they were about like, like about uh, very uh, uh, rushing, and he's like where well, they were pushed. 
the shaitan brought these two, brought this uh, girl to eat without bismillah so the shaitan can eat. I, that's why I took her hand away from the food. And he came, the shaitan came with this Bedouin that, that's, uh, that to make permissible the food, to make it halal for him. That's why I took his hand away. By the one in whose hand is my soul, by Allah Azza wa Jal. Indeed, the hand of the shaitan was with my hand and their hands. When I caught their hands, the, the hand of the shaitan was there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that tells us that Hudayf al Rahman was very close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Among his uh, uh, virtues that he was radiallahu ta'ala, he was very keen in, in, uh, in joining good and forbidding evil and teaching Muslims for the goodness and that is uh, coming from many a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One hadith, Hudayf al Rahman radiallahu ta'ala enters in masjid and he sees a man pray. And he saw that he is not perfecting the ruku' nor the sujood. After he finished the salah, Hudayfa tells him and he asks him, Mundu kam hadi salatu? Yani, uh, uh, from, from since when you're praying this salah? Yani how many days, years, months you're praying this salah? He said, Mundu arbayna sana. Since 40 years, 4-0. What did Hudayf al-Adawin say to him? He said, مَا صَلَّيْتُ مُنْدَ مَا صَلَّيْتَ مُنْدَ وَرْبَيْنَ سَنَةً Indeed, you have not prayed since 40 years. Meaning your salah, 40 years, is, was not right. He says, وَلَوْ مِتَّ وَهَذِي صَلَاتُ لَمِتَّ عَلَى غَيْرِ الْفِطْرَ الَّتِي فُطِرَ عَلَيْهَا مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And if you were to die, and you are still praying this type of salah, this form of salah that you are praying, you would have died in not in the middle of the Prophet, not in the, the one, the deen of Prophet Muhammad. Can you imagine? Obviously, now he didn't say this word and khalas are done. No, now he's teaching him. So he taught him. He said, He said, Indeed, a person may he may want to make short salah, not long, but he completes the ruku and sujood. Even if you pray for two minutes, you have to complete the ruku on sujood. Even if you are in a hurry to go somewhere, we have something, you have to complete the ruku. You may be in a hurry in a recitation. Don't recite long surahs. Recite short surahs. But ruku and sujood has to be perfected. Has to be completed. Why? Because if the person does not perfect the ruku and sujood, that means that your salah is not prayed right. And if your salah is not prayed right, then it's not accepted. So that was he is telling. Hudayf al Naman, he says, In kana rajulu la yatakallamu bil kalamati ala ahdi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa yasiru biha munafiqat. He says and tells us about the reality on the time of the Prophet. He says, they used to. Uh, a person used to speak or talk something in the time of the Prophet and with these words that he used to talk, he would become a munafiq, hypocrite. And now among you, I can hear those the same words that were said in that time. A person can he says it not once, but maybe four times in the same place. And he says, And either you will command people for good or enjoying goodness and forbid the evil, or if not, or you or you you call people for khair, otherwise Allah Azzawajal will punish you with a punishment. Will bring you a punishment. Or not only punishment, or Allah will bring as in, in, a, in the case of authority of over you people who are the worst of you. Because what? What is the reason? You don't 
enjoying the good and forbid the evil. Oh, it's okay. That's you don't enjoy the good and forbid the evil. Allah, as a punishment, will bring, will make your leaders to be those the worst of you, and your good people will ask, and Allah will not answer the dua. Your good people from among the ummah will ask Allah Azza wa to bring relief to them and to take away these ashrar and bad and evil people that they are uh, on over them in authority. And, and Allah will not answer your dua. That is based on the hadith of the Prophet almost the same. It does that. That, uh, that because of us not enjoining good and forbidding evil, a punishment of that, that we'll make dua and Allah will not, will not accept our dua. Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one day he was in al Madain. Madain was in the, uh, the Persia. Because the Prophet Umar ibn Khattab, he put him as a governor there. And Dehqan, one man, he brought him a bowl from, from silver. And he took it and he threw it away. He said, And now he's explaining to the people why I did so. He said, I didn't do so except because I told him not to bring me something in a, a silver uh, bowl or anything. And he didn't do that. Yani he, he is still doing it. And the Prophet, وسلم, the second reason is the Prophet, وسلم, he prohibited us to drink from the uh, gold or a vessel which is made out of gold, silver, or silk, the badge. And that, that he said, وسلم, they are for them, non believers, in this dunya and, it, and for us in the hereafter. So it's not allowed for us to drink of in these uh, vessels made of gold and silver, as uh, the Prophet said. I think we stop here, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll talk next time regarding uh, his mawaqif, beautiful mawaqif stance, especially the one in the Battle of Ahsad. Uh, ta'ala, beautiful story of him in that battle, and he had the karama uh, from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that We'll leave it for next time, inshallah ta'ala. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive our sins. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his pleasure in dunya hereafter. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afaq wa al-ghina. Allahumma qina bi halalika al-haramik wa arina bi qadlik amman siwaak. La ilaha ila an subhanak minna kuna min al-zalimin. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa al-zukna al-tiba'a. Wa arina al-daqila daqila wa al-zukna al-shtinada. Allahumma al-suh ikhwanana al-mustada'afina fi ghazza wa filistin. Ya Rabbi al-alamin. اللهم كن لهم ولا تكن عليهم وانصرهم ولا تنصر عليهم اللهم أنجي عبادك المستضعفين في غزة وفلسطين من كيد عدوهم يا رب العالمين اللهم يا ذا الجلال الأكرام عليك بعدوهم وأعدائك أعداء الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بهم فإنهم لا يجزونك اللهم عليك بهم فإنهم لا يجزونك اللهم أرنا فيهم يوما أسودا كيوم عاد وثمود اللهم يا قوي يا متين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا جبار اللهم اهزم الأحزاب يا رب العالمين وزلزل الأرض تحت أخدامهم وزلزل الأرض من تحت أخدام اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين صلى الله على نبي محمد وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك